Hello, as you can see here I've managed to pick up a RX 6900XT Beast. I've already taken it out of the box. Here it is. And it looks exactly the same from this angle as the 6800, because it pretty much is. Same shroud for the cooler, but it is quite a bit thicker. So you can see it's got a lot more heat sink. This is a gigabyte model, so obviously I've put a gigabyte sticker on. Has the same two eight pin connectors and the same rear I/O. So we're going to go through this pretty quickly. But I've also got my reference 6800 here as well. So you can see the thickness difference. And interestingly, the Radeon logo on the 6900 XT is clear, whereas 6800 it's red. Didn't know that. But yeah, same rear I/O, same overall dimensions of the card, they're literally both the same other than the thickness. Both got 16 gigs of uh, VRAM as well. Very similar. The Radeon 6900 XT on the bench. Um, it looks extremely similar uh, when the 6800 isn't here. It looks pretty much exactly the same. It is a bit thicker but honestly when it's on the bench you can't really tell. Uh, we've got the 5900X clocked at 4.8, we'll see if it'll run at 4.8 today. It was running at 4.775 or whatever the other day. You can see I've got the driver installed, 20.12.1. So it's just finished the run, completely stock. <laughs> and uh, it's absolutely mental. 56,000 on the GPU score and 39,000 overall. Absolutely bonkers. So you can see down here um, it peaked at 2458 MHz. Obviously, the memory is at about 2000. 62 degrees. Fans literally barely spinning 900 RPM. And it's used 255 watts at 1.175 volts. So I'm not sure um, whether it will be better under vaulted or not, or whether to use that rage mode thing. I don't even know where rage mode is actually. Oh yeah, there it is, rage mode. So I might, I might have a go with some of these settings. It's just finished running in rage mode, and you can see uh, it only scored about 100 points more. So it's literally done nothing. Uh, it did get hotter, and it used more power though. So it got to 270 watts and uh, 68 degrees, a little bit higher on the core clock, but it literally made barely any difference. The main uh, scorings come from the combined and the physics score, I think. Right, so this time I actually did the undervolting rather than uh, the rage mode. You can just see it's on an auto undervolt. And it only undervolted it by 1150 millivolts. You can see it only used 255 watts, which is about the same as before, as far as I know. Uh, but it scored over 40,000 this time. You can see the GPU is about 300 points higher than Rage Mode. So clearly, even though it was clocked faster, it's going slower. So who knows what's going on there? But we've broke 40,000 anyway, almost 41,000. So we'll keep going. So interestingly, at the stock voltage using 293 watts, getting to 2508 megahertz on the core, it's actually quite a bit faster on the graphics score, but it's scored lower overall because the physics and combined have gone down a bit. That was with the fans on 100% speed, and the power limit just raised to the max. So first run with the overclock and undervolt, it's used 293 watts, uh, hit 2563 on the core, you can see we've got a GPU score of 58,000 now, so that's a decent increase, and that was with a max frequency just set to uh, 2600, the voltage set to um, 1150, and the fan on 100% power limit on 15 or uh, plus 15 there. 
We did get higher on the clock there, but it still looks like we're stuck at 293 watts. So the score isn't really that much higher. I guess we'll keep going to 2700 and see what happens. 2650 on the core set to 2700 um, in the Radeon software, and it scored 58,800. So it's gone up a little bit. Starting to think we have a bit of a CPU bottleneck here, which is hilarious with a uh, 5900X at 4.8. Um, the GPU scored 59,000. It did crash when I put it to 2700 in the Radeon software, so I came back in again and put it back to 2650, but I boosted the memory, the minimum, sorry, up to 2450, and I put the memory to 2150 on the fast timings as well. There we go, we've got 42,000, but it ain't because the GPU score's gone up, it's because the physics and the combined score have lined up perfectly. Uh, it's used 294 watts this time as well, so it's found an extra 1 watt somewhere to give to the GPU. Still haven't hit 60,000 on the GPU score yet though, which is what I want to do before I turn off tessellation and all that. So I'll keep going and see if I can get it there. I have managed to get a higher score on that last run, but I cannot get the GPU score to go any higher. Uh, the physics and combined score are making loads of difference because the GPU score is just so high that Firestrike has almost become a CPU test. Done the first run of Firestrike Extreme at the same settings we were at on a normal Firestrike. It's got 29,575 on the uh, graphics score there, giving us an overall of 27,000. I think we should probably get higher on the combined and the physics score so I'm going to run it a couple more times just to see what it can get. Yeah there you go, it's got a bit of a higher score that time mostly because the physics score went up. Uh, GPU score has gone up a little bit but not a lot. Run Fire Strike Ultra for the first time on this card. Got 14,682 on the GPU score, 14,594 overall. Got an extra 100 points on the overall score there by literally doing nothing, just running it again. You can see all the settings are the same as before, so yeah, sometimes you just run it a few times and it gets a much higher score because it's so inconsistent. So I've just tried a really big undervolt, so I've gone all the way down to 1100 uh, millivolts rather than 1150 which I was running before. And it's got me another 100 points in Fire Strike Ultra. So I'm going to go back to uh, Extreme and Normal Fire Strike and run those again as well. The bigger undervolt is kind of helping the GPU score as you can see. The physics score was also really good that time but the combine is just dragging it down which is really annoying. But it is nearly at 60k so I think if I just overclock the core a, a tiny bit more we might get to 6,000 or 60,000 sorry on the graphics card definitely getting towards there but the combined score is still not cooperating really need that combined score to be like 14,000 or whatever it was earlier we have got over 42,000 again now but you can see the GPU went down a couple of points on that run and the combined score still isn't quite high enough boom fire strike extreme over 30,000 on the GPU score which means in normal fire strike that would have scored over 60,000 on the GPU score because this uh, graphics test is pretty much exactly twice as difficult as normal fire strike so even though the combined and the physics test work great that graphics score is uh, pretty mega so we got a really nice boost on the overall score as well so we got 27,500 which is really nice I think if the physics score was like five to seven hundred points higher and the combined was a bit higher as well there we go 15,000 in Fire Strike Ultra managed to get that graphic score to go over 15,000 at 26, 21, 2044 on the 2144 on the memory. So there we go. We have over 60,000 on the graphics score, but the damn combined score messed it up again. So that's really annoying. 
Uh, the physics score is pretty decent, pretty close to 38,000, but for some reason the combined score uh, is just not working at all. I don't know why. We're getting there, it is creeping up. We got a really nice physics score on that last run. Got the highest score yet. Almost there. There we go. 42, 438. Combined score almost 14,000, that's what I wanted. So we're going to move on to Time Spy next. See what this beast can do. Got the first Time Spy score. Over 20,000 on the graphics score, what a monster. That's 19,581 overall. Uh, let's see what kind of clocks it was getting in GT2. Yeah, around 4, 24, 2500. Looks like it peaked at 2600-ish. So yeah, pretty good. 51 degrees Celsius as well. So still pretty chilly. Um, very, very impressive actually. It's got an even higher score. 19,742 overall. 20,424 on the graphics. So it has crashed. I went all the way down to, I think, 1030 or 1040 millivolts on the voltage. So that is clearly too low. It's completely locked up now. Just done a run of Time Spy Extreme because I got bored of running Time Spy and obviously you saw it crashed. Got 10,004 on the graphics score and 8,861 on the CPU score, 9,814 overall. Pretty uh, epic score there. So you can probably see it's taken a fancy to freezing in Time Spy all the time, which is a bit annoying. This is Time Spy Extreme that's frozen in this time, so I'm going to have to restart it again. Got a border running Time Spy Extreme, so we've moved on to 3D Mark Skydiver. First score right off the bat, 102,000. Just run 3D Mark Night Raid. Got 179,000 on the graphics score, 18,200 on the CPU score. 77,159 overall in 3D Mark Wildlife. We've scored 120,167. So there's Port Royal overclocked, 10,804. That's faster than my 2080 Ti was, that's for sure. Now, whether it's faster than all the 2080 Ti's, I don't think it is. But that is pretty decent race racing performance. It's a lot better than the 6800. And it even hit like 60 to 80 FPS on some bits, mostly at 40 to 50 most of the time. So for anyone who hasn't seen the previous video where I tested the 6800 versus the 3070 versus the 2080 Ti in Port Royal, you'll know that I did a extra round of what I'm calling Port Royal Extreme. So we turn. Um, everything up to 4k and then we do high on the reflection quality and then we turn the reflection count and the AF up to maximum and then we just run it like that that was absolutely brutal um, you can see it actually used nearly 10 gigabytes of VRAM uh, it was running at 301 watts, 2,645 in my unofficial Port Royal Extreme. That's uh, actually about the same as the RTX 3070, which isn't too bad. It's a hell of a lot more than the 6800 got. So now I've run the full suite of benchmarks that I wanted to run. Gone into the AMD driver here and into gaming and I've turned the tessellation off in the global graphics settings here. Scores no longer going to be valid, however it will be higher and valid for hardware bot. So we're going to run all of the fire strike benchmarks with tessellation off. It should score well over 60,000 on the GPU test. There we go, first score with tessellation off. You can see the GPU scores jumped all the way 
up to 63,797. But we're getting just over 63,000, or 60,000, sorry, with tessellation on. So that's clearly a big jump. Uh, we also can overclock the car a little bit more, maybe undervolt it a little bit more, see if we can get a little bit more performance out of it. This is GT2, I just want to give you an idea of what kind of FPS this thing's getting in Fire Strike. This is normal Fire Strike with tessellation off. Right, I've got a really nice jumping score there. 64,800 on the GPU score, giving us 43,838 overall. And you can see it's not even uh, overclocked quite as much as it was before. But I'm just lowering the voltage at the minute. Before I was running the voltage around 1050, but I needed to raise it up a little bit um, with the tessellation turned off. So I'm just bringing it back down again, seeing how far we can go. And there we go, just keeps getting faster. 65,320. Unfortunately, the overall score went down that time. There we go, 44,120. Over 65,000 on the graphics score again. And a little boost on the core clock to get that. I don't think we can go much lower on the voltage, but I'll keep sneaking that core clock up, see if I can get a bit more out of it. Yeah, I've just run Fire Strike Extreme, and you can see the graphic score 33,320, overall score 29,600, which is mental. Uh, that's literally like nearly 2,000, yeah, just over 2,000 points more uh, just from turning tessellation off. This is Fire Strike Ultra with tessellation off. Finally, I've got a good combined score and physics score to match the graphics score. Look at that. 38,450, over 14,000 on the combined. This has taken absolutely ages. I've run it like a million times to try and get those two to line up. And over 65,000 on the graphics score. So I'm going to try Fire Strike Extreme and hope I can get the same kind of physics and combined. Fire Strike Ultra with tessellation off. Got 16,800 on the graphics score. The physics score's a little bit on the low side at just under 38,000. And the combined is 8,114. Gives us 16,432 overall. You can see the clocks and the temperatures there. So I'm running Time Spy Extreme again, and I almost got a perfect score there exactly 10,000 on the graphics score and almost 9,000 on the CPU score, we were just 4 points off managed to get 19,935 in time spy there's pretty much no way I'm going to get higher than this now can't reach 20k <laughs> it's just, you have no idea how many times I've run this, it's insane is actually the next day now, the 31st of, uh, it's the last day of the year basically. Yeah, so, GPU's getting to about 50 degrees towards the end of the benchmark. Uh, it gets over 200 FPS on GT1.